Boltzmann Brain A Boltzmann Brain is a thought experiment that suggests that, given enough time, a self-aware brain could randomly form in the universe due to quantum fluctuations. This hypothetical brain would have memories and perceptions of really living in a structured reality even though it is just a temporary random occurrence in a chaotic universe, this theory asks if it's more likely for the universe to exist with all its complexity or for a single brain with false memories to appear randomly. If the latter is more probable, it implies that everything you experience might just be a brief hallucination by a Boltzmann brain. Solipsism Solipsism is the idea that only your own mind can be known for sure to exist. According to this theory, the outside world, other people, objects and events cannot be definitely proven to exist beyond your own perception. This is because all experiences are subjective, meaning they are understood through your individual mind. So, while you may see and interact with the world, solipsism questions if the world actually exists on its own or if it's all just created by your mind. You have no way to know. The Teletransportation Paradox The Teletransportation Paradox is a thought experiment that explores the implications of teleportation and identity. Imagine a teleportation device that scans a person's entire body and mind, mapping every atom and neural connection. The device then transmits this information to another location where a new, identical body is constructed, perfectly replicating the original person, including their memories and personality. The paradox arises when considering what happens during this process. Is the person who arrives at the destination the same individual who entered the teleportation machine? If the original person is disassembled at the point of departure, is that person effectively killed? If so, then the new person created at the destination, while identical in every way, is technically a different individual. The Egg Theory The Egg Theory is a thought experiment that suggests that every person who has ever lived or ever will live is actually the same being, experiencing life in different forms and at different times. The theory proposes that when a person dies, they are reincarnated as another person without any memory of their previous lives. This process continues until that being has lived every human life in existence. According to the theory, the universe exists as an egg, a place for this single being to grow and mature through the experience of living many lives. Once all lives have been lived, the individual reaches a higher state of consciousness and becomes like a god, completing their spiritual evolution. The Omnipotence Paradox The Omnipotence Paradox is a thought experiment that challenges the concept of omnipotence or unlimited power. It asks whether an all-powerful being like God could create a stone so heavy that even they cannot lift it. The dilemma arises because both possible answers seem to limit the being's power. If the being can create the stone, they cannot lift it, which means there's something they cannot do. This implies a limit to their power, contradicting the idea of being all-powerful. On the other hand, if they cannot create such a stone, this also indicates a limitation, as they are unable to do something that should be within the scope of omnipotence. But God might be over logic itself, or one might say that by omnipotent we mean a being that can do anything that is logically possible. Being all-powerful doesn't mean doing logically impossible things, like creating a square circle. It means having power over everything that exists. Logical impossibilities, like a square circle, aren't real things that can exist, so it remains just a cool, debunked thought experiment. Antinatalism Antinatalism is a philosophical position that argues against giving birth, suggesting that it is morally wrong to bring new individuals into existence. This is because life itself inherently involves suffering, pain, and hardship, so it is better not to create new lives that will inevitably face these challenges. One key argument in antinatalism is that coming into existence exposes individuals to more suffering than joy, making it not worth it. Additionally, some antinatalists point out the environmental and ethical implications of overpopulation, arguing that it contributes to suffering not just for individuals, but for society as a whole and the planet. You are not free. This theory about the absence of free will in human life suggests that individuals believe they have the ability to make choices and take actions based on their desires. However, they do not have the ability to control the will behind any of their actions, thus making them a slave to their own desires. In order to prove this theory, the following thought experiment is proposed. If you're deciding between which ice cream flavor to pick, chocolate or vanilla, and end up deciding that you genuinely want chocolate, there is absolutely nothing you could do in that situation to change that desire, unless an external factor that you also cannot control is involved, such as finding out that vanilla ice cream is cheaper or that it's not as unhealthy. This shows that the only way for you to do anything is by wanting to do it, which we already determined you cannot control, 
or by being forced to do it, which you obviously cannot control either, thus proving that free will does not exist. Ship of Theseus The Ship of Theseus is a philosophical thought experiment that questions the nature of identity and change. It begins with a ship owned by the hero Theseus, and over time as the ship sails its wooden parts decay and are replaced with new ones. Eventually every original part is replaced, which leads to the central question, is the fully restored ship still the ship of Theseus? To complicate matters, suppose the original parts are gathered and reassembled into another ship. Now there are two ships, one composed entirely of new materials and one made of the original components. This scenario showcases how definitions are artificial and not as stable as we think. Does the ship retain its identity despite having all its parts replaced? Which ship is the true ship of Theseus? Ethical Egoism Ethical egoism is the philosophical theory that individuals should always act in their own self-interest and have no regard for the consequences of their actions on others. This theory asserts that actions are only morally right if they benefit the individual performing them, emphasizing that values like sympathy and altruism were an idea constructed by weak individuals who could not assert themselves in society, so they had to make up an entire moral system to justify their incompetence. Ethical egoism argues that, like all other animals, we have a deep desire to secure our own survival, and we should not deny it or act against it, as it would be unnatural and damaging to do so. Furthermore, ethical egoists argue that by pursuing their own goals, individuals may also contribute positively to society, as their actions can lead to overall better outcomes for other people as well. Rocco's Basilisk Rocco's Basilisk is a thought experiment suggesting that a future artificial superintelligence could be motivated to punish or torture individuals who knew about the possibility of its existence but did not actively help in bringing it into reality. The purpose of this punishment would be to incentivize people to support its development. Essentially, the AI might create virtual simulations where those who fail to assist in its creation are tortured. Essa est percipi. Essa est percipi means that everything only exists if it's being perceived. For example, if you sit on a chair and stand up without looking at the chair, the chair has ceased to exist. Quantum immortality. Quantum immortality is a thought experiment stemming from the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. This theory suggests that a conscious being cannot experience their own death because there exist alternate realities where they continue to survive. The core concept proposes that every decision or event creates multiple branches of reality. In life-threatening situations, there will always be at least one version of reality where the individual survives. Therefore, when faced with danger, the individual's consciousness only perceives outcomes in which they remain alive. As a result, quantum immortality implies that individuals would perceive themselves as immortal, as they can never experience their own death. Philosophical Zombies Philosophical zombies are hypothetical beings that look and act like humans but lack conscious experience. These beings behave exactly as humans do, but they have no inner life, no subjective feelings or thoughts. The thought experiment challenges materialism, which holds that consciousness can be fully explained by physical processes in the brain. If it's possible to imagine a being that is physically identical to a human but lacks consciousness, then consciousness might not be fully explained by physical states. Zeno's Paradoxes Zeno's paradoxes are a set of thought experiments from the Greek philosopher Zeno, who used them to argue that motion is impossible, or at least not what it seems. The most famous paradox is Achilles and the tortoise, which highlights the problems that come up when we think about dividing things into infinitely small parts. In this example, Achilles, a fast runner, is racing a tortoise, which is much slower. To make it fair, the tortoise starts ahead. Zeno argued that Achilles can never actually catch up to the tortoise because every time he reaches the point where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved a little bit further ahead. Imagine walking towards a destination. To reach it, you'd first have to walk halfway there, and to walk halfway there, you'd first have to walk a quarter of the way there, and so on, creating an infinite number of steps and causing you not to be able to reach your destination. Problem of Induction the problem of induction, introduced by David Hume, questions how we can justify our belief that the future will resemble the past. For example, we expect the sun to rise tomorrow because it has risen every day before. However, Hume pointed out that there's no logical guarantee this will always happen. Just because something has occurred many times doesn't mean it will continue to do so. Any justification for this assumption relies on past experiences, which is circular reasoning. 
If we say that we trust induction because it has worked in the past, we are using induction to justify induction. This means that our reliance on patterns in the world is based more on habit than on solid logical grounds. The experience machine. The experience machine is a thought experiment proposed by philosopher Robert Nozick to challenge the idea that pleasure and happiness are the only things that matter in life. In this scenario, imagine a machine that can provide you with any experience you desire. You could feel immense joy, love, success, or any other pleasurable sensation, all while being completely unaware that these experiences are simulated. Nozick asks whether you would choose to plug into this machine for the rest of your life. Many people intuitively reject the idea of living in the experience machine, preferring real life with its struggles and hardships over an artificial existence filled with pleasure. This rejection suggests that there are values beyond mere pleasure, such as authenticity, relationships, and the pursuit of genuine achievements. Moral anti-realism Moral anti-realism is the philosophical view that there are no objective moral truths or values independent of human beliefs and opinions. According to this perspective, moral statements do not describe facts about the world, but are instead expressions of our attitudes or preferences. For example, if someone says killing people is wrong, a moral anti-realist would argue that this statement doesn't reflect an absolute truth. Instead, it expresses a social consensus or a personal belief. The idea is that actions like killing are not inherently good or bad. Rather, we label them as such based on cultural norms, societal agreements, or individual feelings. The Paradox of Tolerance The Paradox of Tolerance, created by philosopher Karl Popper, examines the limits of a tolerant society. Popper argues that a truly tolerant society should not tolerate intolerance, because if a society extends tolerance to those who are intolerant, it risks allowing intolerant groups to gain power and suppress the very freedoms that enable a tolerant environment. For example, if a tolerant society allows hateful ideologies to flourish, those ideologies could undermine the rights and freedoms of others, which creates a dilemma. If a society tolerates all viewpoints, including those that advocate for intolerance or violence, it may ultimately lead to the destruction of tolerance itself. Popper suggests that in order to maintain a tolerant society, it is necessary to take a stand against intolerant beliefs and actions, even if this means limiting the freedom of those who follow them. The Knowledge Argument the knowledge argument, often illustrated by the thought experiment known as Mary's Room, was proposed by philosopher Frank Jackson. He created a scenario in which a girl named Mary is a brilliant neuroscience scientist who knows everything there is to know about the physical aspects of color, but she lives in a black and white room and has never experienced color herself. One day, Mary leaves her room and sees a red apple for the first time. The knowledge argument poses the question, does Mary learn something new about color when she sees the apple? Jackson argues that she does, because although Mary had all the scientific knowledge about how color perception works, her experience of seeing color for the first time provides her with new information that she could not have known while confined to the black and white room. This thought experiment suggests that there are non-physical aspects of knowledge, specifically the subjective experiences of perception. The Infinite Monkey Theorem the infinite monkey theorem is a thought experiment that suggests that, given an infinite amount of time, a monkey randomly pressing keys on a typewriter or keyboard would eventually type out any given text, such as the complete works of William Shakespeare. Thanks for watching, friends. Suggest ideas for the video in the description. I don't think you'll be able to click on the next video until time runs out. Three, two, one, you've lost.